Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to tear down a 1989 Sony Watch Cube model KVX370. You know, for all you guys that have these. This is a unique and rare beam index cathode ray tube TV that also functions as an alarm clock. It was intended to be used as a bedside clock, but you could also watch TV on it, so that's pretty cool. This was one of the few mass produced beam index CRTs and the only Indextron television Sony sold aside from a monitor and some prototypes. Unfortunately, these units were plagued by faulty capacitors that failed very early. They essentially leaked their guts out and wreaked havoc on the boards, components, and copper traces. Rumor has it that Sony recalled these because most of them failed. For this reason, it's very difficult to find a working model. This black watch cube is one I recently serviced and revived from the dead. I did a lot of cleanup work and replaced dozens of leaky capacitors, and they were totally failed. I still have some tweaking to do, but the screen finally shows a picture, so that's cool. Before we get to the teardown, I wanted to show you a cool thing I found on eBay. This is a brand new NOS Indextron picture tube. It's the exact unit for the Sony Watch Cube. I snagged two of these from a seller who probably didn't know how special they were. Interestingly enough, the box listed as a Trinitron instead of an Indextron. However, the model number matches the one for the Watch Cube. Check out that tiny anode connector. These beam index tubes have short necks because they only have one cathode. There is no need for convergence hardware since there is only one beam. You can see the index stripes on the front of the screen. There are 148 triplets total with UV index stripes separating them. The tubes have a peculiar metallic reflection. Okay, now onto the teardown. First thing we need to do is remove these three screws from the back, and that'll loosen the case. Easy enough. Next, we have to press down these two tabs to open the case. Move the antenna out of the way and it should slide right off. Next, I'll have to loosen the connector for the speaker. Pop that right off and then the back of the case will come right off. And there's a little speaker. And there is the inside of the Sony Watch Cube. This thing is packed full of hardware, boards everywhere. Next step is removing the control panel with the uh, two screws. Move another cable and a ground wire, and then another control connector. Pop that off, and then the control unit will be free. This control panel has deflection board three on it. I replaced all the capacitors on there so they look brand new. Okay, next step, need to remove the antenna cable. Should be able to pry that right up. And then the connector, same thing. Pop that right off. and the antenna and input assembly comes off. The next step will be to discharge the CRT. I have a homemade discharge tool. I'll wedge the screwdriver under the cap 
and should discharge any current that's in there. I'd like to touch the anode cap and the tube to make sure it's discharged fully. For the next step, we'll remove the neck board, pop off four ground wires, and then we can gently remove the neck board from the tube. Here's a close up look at the tube, very short, and a close up look at the neck board. The next step will be to remove these plastic supports so the boards can swing out. These plastic supports are extremely brittle and I already broke most of the tabs off of them. Once you move the tab out of the way, the board should swing right out. and the plastic pieces can be removed. Next, I can remove the UV sensor that sits behind the tube. Here's a close-up of the sensor. Then I can pop off the connector that goes between the tube and the board. And the whole front bezel and tube should come off at this point. Here's a close-up of the assembly. The next step will be to remove this plastic brace and then swing out part of the deflection board. And there we go. Deflection board can swing out. Easy access. The whole thing folds out. I already replaced all the capacitors on both of these deflection boards. Unfortunately, there's some ugly corrosion from the electrolytic gel that leaked everywhere. Some of these surface mount components are so fragile, I did not want to risk cleaning them and damaging them further. I did what I could, but some of it still looks ugly. Here's a look at the tiny flyback transformer. Next, I'll remove a couple cables that connect the A board to the deflection board. These should pop right off. Then I'll need to remove another screw that holds the deflection board onto the A board. And the whole assembly should come off. Here's a look at the backside. There's a lot of surface mount components. And here's a look at the A board and the back side of the A board. The capacitors on the A board seem to be in pretty good shape, so I left them alone. Here's a closer look at the capacitors I replaced. And that's how you do it. I'm going to do some further tweaking on the boards before I reassemble it, but that's about it for tearing it down. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you guys enjoy these kinds of things like I do. Take care.